All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Justin Brad, and this video is another motorized bike video. We're going to talk about how you get your bike license to get the license plate on the bike. Okay, that's what this video is primarily about. another video explaining why you need the license plate why you should get it because there are some people on my youtube channel that say i'm a hypocrite for having a license plate which i think is very strange and i'll get back to that later but in any case um let me see if i can get some of the stuff off here i don't need when i'm reading this to you okay so whole stack of papers here all right so first thing it says is you got to have this form here, which is, because this is for state of Washington, your state probably has a similar process or it's just legal and nobody cares, I don't know. But um, here we go. So we got this uh, form TD-420-809. They call it um, Homemade Assembled Vehicle Use Declaration. Now, I don't claim to have a vehicle. I claim it's an automobile, but in any case. So we're going to read this you got to have certificate of ownership title or notarized bills of sale for the vehicles used in the assembly or they have a declaration that you can fill out but that's not listed here uh bills of sale or invoices for all major component parts uh receipts receipts for all parts used in construction you've got to have those receipts buy it on amazon buy it on ebay buy it from bike or wherever you buy it you got to have your receipts and i encourage you to buy it from bikeberry because well, there's a lot less complications, and I've got some videos on eBay and why you should try to stay away from eBay as much as possible. Uh, I just got an eBay speedometer, does not work with the motorized bike. You need a bike very uh, mechanical one. But anyway, um, then you got to have a certificate of vehicle inspection completed by the Washington State Patrol. You got to have a certified scale weight slip, which I just got today, a little video clip on that, and then. Declaration of Value Form, which is TD-420-737. Odometer Disclosure Statement, if the model year is less than 10 years old. And I've got it. And the people told me I didn't need it. The people that give the license plates out, they're like, you don't need an odometer reading because you're not going to have an odometer on the bike. But I, I don't know. Anyways, frame certification, if applicable. Bumper certification, if applicable. And it's not in my case. Okay. At least that's what I've been told. I might find out I'm wrong. So... You're supposed to have a headlight, tail light, brake light, turn signals, license plate lamp. Eh, don't have that yet. That's something I'm going to have to work on, but I don't think the inspector cares. He told me he didn't. Um, he's just looking to make sure everything I bought is mine, basically. Speedometer, odometer, reflectors, horn, mirrors, brakes, suspension system of some kind, muffler, tires, Fenders and splash guards, windshield if applicable, and you can put a windshield on. That actually helps because um, you do have to have a DOT approved helmet, which is not on this list for some reason, and you have to have something in front of your eyes. It either has to be glasses or a shield or a windshield on the bike or something. I think they're afraid of like rocks being picked up that go in your eye from people going up and down the road or something. I, I don't know. But um, you got to have something covering your eyes. Um, so that's, that's some of the stuff and yeah, declaration of value form, you gotta have that. So that's just some of it. Now you do need to have an actual, uh, driver's license in order to get them to cooperate with all of this. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go through here and look at some of the other forms that may or may not be mentioned there. So, okay. So you definitely have to have... Washington State Patrol Inspection Request Form filled out by the Department of Licensing at your local courthouse or wherever prior to the inspection. If you do not have that, they won't do the inspection. Okay. And uh, Vehicle Vessel Declaration of Value Excise Tax Form. We got Certificate of Fact Form. That's the one where you can sign it as a declaration. Um, doesn't say there's any witness required, so that's good. And I think I have the other one too. No, now here's my certified weight slip, which says I, my bike weighs 80 pounds. 
Actually, right now, I think it weighs closer to 70. He couldn't tell because it kept going back and forth 60 to 80, so he just put down 80. Um, got my odometer form, which you do have to get from the Department of Licensing because it's like several layers thick and they have to, it, it's a carbon copy thing. Then all the receipts, so apparently that's the only forms I need. Let's see if I, that's any more forms in here. I don't think there are. I think I just have receipts. So, and I only need the receipts for what's on the bike when it's being inspected. And as long as what's on the bike matches up with the requirements to get a license plate, everything's good to go theoretically. Now, I have no idea what the cost is. I know that getting tabs for a car is like 68 bucks because I just got a thing in the mail telling me I need to get them or something. Um, but uh, anyway, so there you go. And then there's all kinds of legalities and stuff of whether you're the registered owner or a corporation is or whatever, but I don't want to get into all that. I just wanted to get into um, what you got to do to get the thing licensed. Now, I could do, talk a little more about this. So I read some of the Washington State statutes. One of them basically says that whatever muffler exhaust system you get, you cannot modify it. Now, a lot of people like to modify the stock ones, like to cut off the pipe inside because it still sounds quiet, but it runs well. And I'm not against that, but the law says you can't do that. Um, can't do any bypasses, can't cut it off, can't have any mechanisms that open and close the baffle, anything like that. Um, so I got that high performance one from Bikeberry, that black one that fits on my bike with the expansion chamber. And the, the, I think they call it Speed Demon or something. That one is actually perfect as is when you get it from them. And I'll explain. See, I had a misconception. So I got it in the mail and I freaked out because I thought that the whole the exhaust porthole is actually smaller than the stock muffler. Then I held them up next to each other, saw it was the same. And the reason you want that small hole for the exhaust is because when you get up to higher speeds, um, you'll actually lose top end speed if you make the hole bigger. You will get more torque, but you'll lose the speed. So it's it's important to leave that hole uh, the size that it comes when you get it from Bikeberry. Uh, another thing, just as long as we talk about exhaust really quick, is apparently uh, the length between the engine and the expansion chamber should be 30% of the total length of the exhaust and the expansion chamber without the um, muffler on the end in order to get to for it to work right and need to get the boost performance out of it um, otherwise you're not going to be getting performance out of it at least not as much as you could be and it looks like that black one I got that speed demon muffler it looks like it measures out about 30 percent before the total length of the expansion chamber so there's some other math and equations you're supposed to do but what I found is that the people that are out there on the internet that do math equations to figure out how to get the most performance out of their bikes, they're usually wrong. Um, they'll measure top dead center and like replace the mechanical, um, what you call it, uh, ignition system with a computerized one, and they always end up losing power, being off, having to adjust it somewhere else. So I guess they, they look at the stock one and they try to say that it's off. And then when they put theirs on that they say is right, then it doesn't work. And so I think that the best way to leave it is the way it comes from factory and don't do anything else as far as the timing and all that. Um, you know, people want to port them. They want to do all this stuff. And that's, like I said, this is this is a whole other thing. But I'm not sure how long this video is. Um, I like my videos to be about 10 minutes long because YouTube puts more ads on the videos if they're at least 10 minutes long. So it is nice to fill in some of this stuff. But once I get the bike inspected and I get the license plate in the mail, which so when I get this inspected, they're going to assign a VIN number to the bike. And at that point, they will uh, use some sort of mechanism to put that number in the frame of the bike. And it will probably ruin the paint and everything in that spot. And that's fine. You can fix that later, sand it down, whatever. But that VIN number goes there. And the primary purpose, according to the state patrol in Washington State, is so that people can't steal your bike because it's got that number on there. It belongs to you and no one else can steal it. And the plate matches it, you know, for the same reason. Uh, they claim that's the only reason that you have to have the license plate. But yet, if you don't, you know, they might take your bike. They might put you in jail. And in some cases, people even get shot. So um, good idea to have a license plate. Um, 
Anyway, so once you get the VIN number and all of this paperwork from the uh, the state patrol, then what you do, whoever inspects it in your state, then what you do is you go back to the courthouse, the DMV, wherever you get your uh, license plates and license plate uh, tabs, and you go in there with all this paperwork and you give it to them. Now, I don't know if they can print you out a temporary uh, permit or pass until you get your plate. I don't know if they charge you for that. I get no idea. But once I get the license plate for the bike, then I can continue breaking it in. I can take it out on the road and run long trips with it until I run all the gas through it so where it's broken. And that's something I need to do, something I want to do. And it'll be a lot easier when the weather's warmer because right now the bike does not like to start and keep running in cold weather until it's up to full temperature. And that can take a while. So um, <laughs> I guess it's a good thing I have the... Uh, the, the stock head on it because the stock head doesn't dissipate heat as quickly as the performance one that I have. Now there is a performance one out there that does uh, retain heat a lot more and people get upset, say it overheats. And that's why I don't didn't pick it. But um, anyway, uh, what's really cool about this whole experience is once I'm done, including this video, uh, my blog posts, my YouTube channel, I'm have a complete how to tutorial on getting the bike built and getting it licensed in the state of Washington. Now, I believe that Washington and Idaho, you have to have the bikes licensed. Um, I don't know about California. And again, it's also at the discretion of the local uh, law enforcement. Now, the other thing that's important is to call the vehicle inspector before you go there um, and ask them what size of engine they will allow you to have on the bike when they uh, certify it, inspect it, because um, some people will say it has to be 50 cc's and under, and other people will have to, will say we don't care as long as it has pedals and a motor on it. We consider it a moped, we'll approve it, and you can get a license plate for it. So um, that's why it's important to call the uh, the the state patrol inspector first, and if he does allow you to put a motor on there, or engine on there. I'm sorry, motors are electric, engines are gas. If you allow you to put an engine on there that um, is is high performance or whatever, uh, and you're not so sure about the legality of that, you probably also want to check with the Department of Licensing that's going to give you the plate, and you probably don't want to give out more information than you need to in your paperwork about the engine and things like that. I mean, that's that's my comprehension of it. Again not claiming any liability for what you do. Do all your own research first. Check out everything in your state and decide what you're going to do or what you're not going to do. But um, that's what I've learned so far going through this process. And hopefully the same inspector is there. Um, when I get there, um, they told me they do not measure the size of the engine. Um, they do not, uh, you know, check everything out. What they care about is that you own and have a receipt for everything that's on there. Of course, the very best thing you can do is get a certificate of ownership, a title, or a notarized bill of sale. Now, I've never heard of a notarized uh, bill of sale. I've heard of bills of sale, but not notarized bills of sale. That sounds a little extreme to me. And it has been getting more difficult to get notaries to sign people's um, documents. Uh, just the other day, there was a woman in Washington State that told me that she went into a bank and tried to get them to notarize her documents and they had a big long conversation about it and they said they weren't going to do it and then they told her she had to have an appointment to come back in and do it um, which is really strange um, so it's getting harder and harder and uh, knowing where you can get things notarized who will cooperate with you and all of that is useful for a lot of things not just getting your bike licensed but uh, if you're doing court paperwork affidavits things like that uh, which, by the way, got to mention it because I want you guys to do it. Down in the description of the video, there's a thing that says how to win in court. Okay, if you click on that video, that link, it will take you to um, a whole law course, jurisdictionary, and you get a, a degree at the end. It actually says doctor's degree. You get at the end of the course um, if you go through that. And you learn a lot in that course. The other thing is it's recommended by Bill Thornton. It's on his website. I also have a lot of free legal resources. If you go to my YouTube channel, 
you'll see that I have a, a common law YouTube channel, a Freeman common law YouTube channel. That's all the common law stuff. And then if you want to use that and put that into practice, you should click the how to win in court and do that because um, it will get you where you need to be. Now, that, that also has to do with this whole licensing thing. So when you comprehend, like if you go through the common law course that's free on our other channel um, or on this channel, we also have it on this channel, uh, you'll, you'll start to comprehend um, the difference between, you know, uh, registered owner, people, citizen, uh, corporation, person, all that. And that may have allow you to fill out this form differently if you comprehend all of that information. Um, but I will tell you, I was talking to a mechanic the other day, and we we're having chit-chatting back and forth, and he's like, you know, I really am not interested in legal stuff and in the law and in court stuff. And I told him, I said, that's what I said before the government got involved in my life, you know. Um, quick little thing, don't want to, you know, make this video too controversial or anything because YouTube's watching, but um, I had a situation where people I loved and cared about were being sexually assaulted and the government was refusing to do anything about it and there was a lot of drug stuff going on, all kinds of things, and pe the victims were coming for help, they asked for help, government wouldn't give it to them, ignored them, and uh, I, because I asked for help, they decided to come after me and um, cause me legal issues. And so that's, uh, and thankfully before that, I had been watching uh, the information that uh, you're getting now in the common law playlist and link in the, you know, in the description on my website, mindblingy.com. And that really helped prepare me uh, for what was coming. But I'll tell you that jurisdictionary, that completes everything. If you don't do the how to win in court jurisdictionary with the link in the description, uh, you won't know about discovery or how to do subpoenas or summons or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, you need, you need both. You need the free stuff and the jurisdictionary. If you don't have, I mean, you can do it with just the jurisdictionary, but then then you, you risk in not knowing everything. So I, I recommend if you're going to do it, go ahead and go through that seven and a half hour jurisdictionary course and absorb as much knowledge out of there as you can. And then go through the free stuff and just make notes for everything down. And I, I tell you that anyway, I get $50 up to, I think, 125 for everybody who signs up for the how to win in court. Uh, but it's not just me. It's like I said, Bill Thornton's the one who recommended it. I just found out about it. It's great. Um, so go ahead and do that. And uh, consider going to start on Patreon. I don't know if you like how this video looks. I noticed it's a little pixelated on YouTube and stuff. And uh, we need a better camera. I also wanted a VR 360-degree uh, 3D camera for recording bike rides and stuff. Because those, those are awesome videos on YouTube. Because then you can see everything. You can see me. You can see what's in front of the bike, beside the bike, everywhere. You know, and actually, I mean, I could put it on top of my head and you wouldn't see me. You'd just see everything around me. Um, I don't know. You guys can let me know in the comments what you think of that. But um, they've got cheap ones for like 70 bucks that you can get. But then there's a black spot because they only see like from here up. And then you got to pay like $400 for the ones that can see everything. So I don't know if they have a blind spot, but they can see pretty much everything. So anyways, help me out Patreon. That'd be great. Um, God is good. God is good. I didn't have to pay anything for the certified weight slip thing I got. Um, and I'm not supposed to have to pay anything for the inspection, at least that I've read. And, uh, things are just working out. You know, I, I, I prayed this morning. There was a friend of mine, their laptop broke and I was praying this morning that God would provide a new one. And, uh, by like early morning, someone called me and they're like, Hey, I got this laptop and it needs a new hard drive and hey, do you want it? And I'm like, yeah, that would be great. And I think it needs a new charging cable too, but get that and give it to my friend and they'll have a computer again. So God is good. You know, he, he helps out people all the time. So, all right.